Good evening, friends. <clears throat> so tonight is going to be a difficult one for me, of course, and possibly for all of you too. I've had people squirming in their seats before at this venerable occasion, our new church birthday banquet. I seem to pick difficult topics. The first time I spoke up here was 35 years ago, in the late 1980s, when Kynan School was still racially segregated and some of our dearly departed members believed the heavens were too. I stood up here and argued that the doctrines don't support apartheid. It caused a stir. 25 years later, 2013, about 12, 10, 12 years ago, I presented a paper on New Church Doctrine and Homosexuality. It was subtitled Towards a More Charitable Understanding. I think it ruffled a few feathers as well. <laughs> but on that issue too, I think, I think there's more tolerance today. That speech would seem quite tame now in the light of the trans debates we're having now. But in the tradition of challenging some orthodoxies, and with your indulgence, I want to speak tonight about a grave injustice happening in the world right now. Arguably the greatest crime against humanity of our time. I sincerely believe, and here you may mark my words, that our grandchildren and their children will ask our generation how we could let Gaza happen. How, how we could allow what's now 100,000, possibly by the time the dust has settled, 200,000 people, overwhelmingly civilians, to be maimed and killed with impunity. But why the need to raise it at a new church event, a birthday celebration, normally intended for doctrinal understanding and perhaps more personal spiritual pursuits, because it has everything to do with religion, with our own personal values measured against the commandment to love our neighbor, raising one's voice to say this is unjust, this is not normal, is the right thing to do. Because please do, do not believe that this happens in all wars. It doesn't. In Russia's invasion, two and a half year old invasion of Ukraine, for example, 500 children tragically have been killed. About 16 per month. Terrific. 16 too many, I agree. But the in Israeli Defense Forces have killed now nearly 20 thousand children in eight months. That's over 2,000 children a month or 60 a day. For me, it's a religious duty to speak out. Admittedly, it doesn't make me fun at parties. But industrial scale injustice to our neighbor cannot be ignored. It cannot be justified even in the face of enormous media and social manipulation, even if it means ridicule or rejection, I and many others like me around the world feel the duty to speak up. But the other more insidious reason that it's relevant tonight is because religion, that is our common doctrines, are being used by the perpetrators and their defenders to justify objectively horrific crimes. Now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction all that they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. That's 1 Samuel chapter 15, as quoted by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and other cabinet members in October of last year when the Gaza assault began. 
Before I discovered Swedenborg's correspondences about 40 years ago, this passage and others like it in the Old Testament had always challenged my faith as a Christian. How, I asked, could a loving God appear to be so murderous? So it was a great relief to begin to understand doctrine from a deeper, non-purely literal perspective. And it resolved almost all, yes, I still have questions, almost all the discomfort I had about these types of passages, especially in the Old Testament. And there I would have let it rest had I not heard these very words being recited in the present day by Israeli leaders currently transgressing at least the Geneva and plausibly the genocide conventions. <clears throat> Many of our fellow Christians too invoke Armageddon from revelations in the New Testament, which they locate in Israel, because they believe World War III will bring Jesus back. The requirement that billions will have to die in the process seems to me undersold. For us as new church congregants, when we invited the Lord to re-enter our lives, it was quite unnoticeable from the outside. Nobody had to die. Only our own internal tendencies to evil, at least some of them because others survived, but these religious fundamentalists, they expect everyone, at least billions, to die. And that surely is bad, if not worse, than the Islamic fundamentalists who would chop off your head for not converting to Islam, because at least it includes the, issue, the possibility of staying alive. Now, Christians who believe that the Jewish people from all over the world, wherever they might find themselves, have a, have a divine right to a land that's been occupied by indigenous people for millennia, are called Zionists. And they obviously share this belief with Jewish Zionists. It's interesting that there are more Christian Zionists in the U.S. Bible Belt than there are Jewish Zionists in the whole world. British theologian Stephen Sizer estimates that for every Jewish Zionist in the world, there are 30 Christian Zionists. He goes on to say, and I quote, the Israeli government led by Benjamin Netanyahu continues to employ an unapologetic rhetoric invoking biblical references to sell his war to the ultra-right, not just in Israel, but in the U.S., where he is enjoying the support of Christian evangelists, the majority of whom identify with the global Zionist movement for a Jewish homeland. Their belief comes from the end of the world interpretation of the Bible leading to the second coming of Jesus Christ. End quote. It's now so endemic this Christian Zionism, so pervasive that both U.S. presidential frontrunners in the 2024 elections are avowed Zionists, and at least 100 members of Congress and many other Western leaders have effectively given the nod to this divine Jewish birthright to all of historical Palestine, tied, of course, to the notion of a calamitous second coming. So don't let anyone tell you that Zionism and Judaism are the same thing, not least because many Jews are anti-Zionist. It was, in fact, progressive Jews who first opened my eyes to the illegal occupation of Palestine. And even less so because when you mention, as, when you mention Zionism, you're 30 times more likely 30 times more likely to be talking about an evangelical Christian than a Jew. Zionists are waiting for the Messiah to appear, whether for the first or second time, in a blinding flash of light accompanied by the end of the world. These overwhelmingly Christian extremists, admittedly with some well-armed Jewish extremists, on the religious right, who wage or cheer or defend Israel's war crimes are the same people trying to hasten an, ap an apocalypse. Maybe they're not the people that we should be listening to. 
and invoking the Amalekites is also entirely ahistorical, since the Amalek tribe is no longer in existence today with no genealogical trace of it in, mo in modern population groups. So the Palestinians are not Amalek. No living people are Amalek, least of all Palestinians who are among the oldest indigenous populations of the Levant or the Holy Land. DNA studies by Johns Hopkins University Hospital indicate that 80% of Palestinians, that is Muslim, Christian, and Jewish Palestinians, remember uh, Mizra or uh, Arab Jews are indigenous to Palestine, unlike their European immigrant counterparts. 80% of Palestinians are Hebrew descendants, most of whom changed their religion under various occupations, from Judaism to Christianity and to Islam. It's well known, for example, that under the Ottoman Empire, tax rebates were available only to Muslims. And that drove a mass conversion, obviously, to Islam. But even if modern European Israelis really were the Hebrews and Palestinians really were Amalek, would the Lord ever exhort us to kill non-combatants such as women and children and civilian males for that matter? For me, even actual war, which involves the killing of soldiers from each side, is only marginally justified as a defensive response to armed aggression. And, our, and the writings, I think, say as much. But we are talking here about the, the willful killing. By willful, we mean intentional and recklessly negligent killing of civilians as evidenced in Gaza. What is meant by words which may seem bloodthirsty and murderous at face value, but which may hide a, a deeper, more heavenly meaning. In Akana Celestia 8555, we read that Amalek represents falsities that attack truths, and further that this follows the combat of the falsity that is from evil against the truth and good of faith. So what the writings are describing here are internal battles. We must only seek to destroy Amalek in ourselves. That is the remnants of the falsities which incline us to evil. There's no nod there to the use of F-16 jets and 2,000 pound bombs dropped on actual flesh and blood, women, children and other civilians. In Matthew 25, verse 40, Jesus actually said, Truly I say to you, you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. And as for this misplaced belief in the special holy state, or status of Israel, the country, this needs to be challenged unapologetically. This notion that it's somehow elevated from and not a common member of the family of nations, exempt even from the precepts of international humanitarian law. Of course, the Holy Land holds special historical significance for us as Christians and to Jews and to Muslims for that matter. But is it an especially blessed country, the modern state of Israel? I hope that as New Church followers, we can accept that the Lord does not choose any race or even a religion as a preferred people, that all human beings, and I shouldn't have to say this, but all human beings from Amazonian Indians, Polynesian Maoris, and of course, Palestinian Arabs are his people, and that he chose humans, the creatures he made in his image, above the animals to be his people. Neither would he choose a modern country to be especially blessed, like a favored sibling or a teacher's pet. It's important to distinguish that the Israel of the Old Testament is not the same as the modern 
nuclear armed state of Israel. In fact, it's debatable whether the Israel of the Old Testament, Testament even refers to a land at all, especially since it's often used interchangeably with Jacob in the Bible. In Akana Celestia 3881, we read, Not a whit of this is understood of that nation, but of the Lord's celestial kingdom, which is Judah, and of a spiritual kingdom, which is Israel. In Akana Celestia 1069, number 2, By Israel in the word is signified the spiritual church, and by Judah the celestial church. So at a deeper level, these are clearly not geographical de demarcations, despite the conflation by much of our media and some theological f figures. They refer to a state of being, not a nation state. In Arcana Celestia 3325, number 10, Israel is spiritual good. In the supreme sense is the Lord, as to divine spiritual love, and in the relative sense, those who are in charity towards the neighbor. In charity towards the neighbor, let the irony of those words sink in for a moment. So a country co-opting a biblical name does not make it special. In the same way that naming a child with a biblical name doesn't make the child any more holy than other children. Gaza is not the Old Testament happening in real time. This is not a holy war. It's not actually, it's not actually a war at all when the casualties are so horrifically asymmetrical, like a hundred to one against the people that have no army, air force, or navy. And furthermore, to the fundamentalist, extinctionist, Christians and Jews and Muslims for that matter, or other religions who would like humanity to go up in a puff of smoke, we say no. We don't want World War Three. We don't believe it's God's plan to extinguish the human race. We even have a rainbow as testament to this. Our natural lives are sacred, part of God's plan to populate heaven with angels who have intentionally chosen good over evil and truth over falsity. The Lord preached peace, and he is revealed, again for some of us, by a path of personal regeneration through the pursuit of truth by shunning evils and doing good. He will not emerge from a thermonuclear blast. Thank you for hearing me out, and I'm so sorry that you will now not be able to tell your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren that you did not know. <laughs>